So, what did you break? The rudder. Again. The other rudder. The, the old rudder. The other rudder. Yeah. But, you guys are on a mission, aren't you? So, you're hatching a plan. Yeah, hopefully to make it onto the start line of RTI. But it's going to involve a lot of red but not very much sleeping. <laughs> Yeah, what's this, do you think? Whoa, look, black holes, mate. Those would have looked awesome. That's fantastic. Got it. Um, that's, there, there we go, look, those laminating in the bits that we've just had to re-laminate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Pretty awesome boat. So how does it feel to be taking on that history and giving it new life? It's a challenge. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. It feels good, you know. It's a 35-year-old boat, and, um... Yeah, it's really struggling for height. Two, two, three, go! One, two, three, one, two, three. Ah. Take it away, I'll take it away. Ready? Give it a... Luca, it's down, it's down, it's down! It's down! Formula 28, wasn't it? Yeah. So you wouldn't expect to take a 35 year old F1 car and have it work perfectly, would you? So um, we're mm -hmm. kind of yeah in the process of putting her back together and working out how to race her again. So yeah. finish here, Thank getting closer. That's yeah, Cat One pulling ahead of Slinky. Yeah, See if we can take third over the water. Good pressure. Good shift from the team on D1. So I am a placement student at Multimarine, so I'm studying marine engineering at Plymouth University, uh, which is, you know, something that I sort of came to through growing up sailing. Um, and for my placement year, I came to work here. Um, my family's been involved with the boatyard for a few years and just seemed like a good place to come back to. And that's, that's sort of where we met D1 or where I met D1. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah. Okay, and how, have you been enjoying your work placement? Oh, it's great, yeah. Best placement in the world. <laughs> you met D1. Okay, thanks, Pete. And I'm Luca. I've been a designer here now for just over a year. My grandfather was one of Daz's first sponsor for D1, actually. He gave him a, a sum of money to build to build Daz Cat 1, um, and it's all spiralled off from there. Um, so it's a nice full circle coming back to the company and, um, and helping out where I can. Did you just meet D1 and decide it's a project that you would like to do or how, how did that come about? So I started racing on her oh, probably about a year ago now, just doing some small round can stuff with a couple of the other guys in the yard. And you know, as an old boat goes, if you start pushing her hard, she starts breaking again. Um, that's where Pete came in um, once he started. He's our main fixer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The first time I ever sailed her was a race offshore-ish yeah. sort of distance race from the sound. And uh, it was about 20, 25 knots. 25 knots, we were about 10 miles offshore. Sure. And, and the, rudder, the, Edison, the rudder broke. Um, <laughs> so that was, that was my first experience of D1 and I was kind of just clinging on for dear life and feeling very <laughs> out of my depth. So. <laughs> Had you previously mostly sailed monohulls? Yeah. It's a bit of a transition. Yeah. <laughs> Throwing myself in at the deep end, definitely. But I, think, I don't know, I feel like I'm picking it up quite quickly. And um, yeah, I mean, we've had not amazing results generically, but for a boat that gives time to a, you know, 60 foot gunboats, I think our results have been quite good for our first season as a team pushing the boat mm -hmm. um, and you know we're learning what we want to rebuild and what we want to 
fix and improve and make better and hopefully at some point we'll make her competitive again so okay that's the aim yeah um you d- you have just had an amazing success you not only got her up to the Solent you completed the nationals yep. and the round the island race which is didn't quite complete no. <laughs> <laughs> well we had our challenges you were there at the beginning the and at the end <laughs> but you did have quite a few challenges yeah um along the way with that well what the first we uh we blew up our spinnaker on sail up in uh well where were we we were just off portland mm. cruising up in about 15 knots of breeze and just had this really weird swell coming at us so we were going downwind into a head-on swell and just the motion of it just got a bit much for the kite and just tore it down the middle um which was challenge number one luckily we were carrying another kite with us so it didn't hurt us too badly um but the the pink kite was sort of our main kite yeah so we were a bit gutted to lose that before racing Mm -hmm. um but it was quite good because that then gave us the rest of the delivery to work out how to sail the boat with the with the other kite yeah which we hadn't previously got along with so well when we sort of had to learn how to sail with it and push through the bigger car uh, yeah yeah that actually worked out working quite well didn't it so, yeah. yeah and we got what 20 25 plus to 30 knots of breeze um towards the end of it we did yeah sort of portland bill to hurst in three hours i think it was it's yeah. pretty good pretty, pretty good <laughs> knots boat speed once we got into the flatter water behind um old harry and and um and in that bay between pool and hearst we were really pushing and uh and she was going great yeah um she was pretty happy in it in, yeah in the smaller swells um then the engine decided it didn't want to be an engine anymore yeah okay. so it came in with no engine had to sail onto the pontoon at cows uh which is you know what you got to do on that boat? <laughs> we did that twice that week, actually, didn't yeah, we? Yeah, we did. Served <laughs> onto the pontoon twice. But yeah, got it there all in one piece. Managed to get the lovely guys at High Water Sales to lend us another set of spinnakers. Okay. Which we didn't which use. Which we didn't end up Which's using in the end, okay. but it was nice yeah. to have the option. Yeah. I, thought, I thought Andy had spent some hours. Yeah. As well, well, so we went and we did the first day of racing at Nationals, which was awesome. Yeah. Um, had one really, really good port flyer start and scared a couple of other competitors. on the last race of the day we ripped our spare spinnaker and Russia holding for 10 Russia on now for 5 holding for another 5 yeah I got yellow down below Keep thinking, baby. Uh, we've got good speed. Send it there, lads. What are we looking for, mate? Are we happy I'm happy there. I'm happy there. Right. Yeah. Found the end on the big dust, please. Yeah. Yeah. On in five. Okay, pressure on. Right, yellow's down there still. So, what are we doing? Uh, of course. Partners. Yellow one there, then we're looking for a green, big green, and way out. Way Yeah, go in. Oh, 
goes where than the last one. See what happens. Yeah. I think we're just gonna have to put it up and see what happens. This one. So we spent an evening in North Sales Cows, which was organised by the guys at High Water, mm. putting back together the purple kite. And we were going to have a look at the one we blew up on the delivery, but that basically got condemned. So we've got to try and persuade uh, someone to get us a new spinnaker <laughs> over the winter. Any sponsors out there that would like to <laughs> get them on the boat? Um. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Well, it was very good of North and High Water yeah. to let you. Uh, yeah, yeah. And obviously, the... you know, um, well, I, I went up with Tom, who was sailing with us, is um one of the trainee sail makers at High Water, um, yeah. and uh, Jack, who was trimming our main sheet, he lives in Cows and had his car with him, which was fortunate. So he drove us up there, mm. um, and um. Tom and Andy did a lot of sewing because we took some other spinnakers from some other competitors' boats with us. And uh, Jack and I just checked them for pinholes at the end. And um, yeah, we're back on back on the water racing for day two. Just a little bit tireder than slightly. The first. I, well, you know, yeah. I, was, I was busy networking it's and uh, <laughs> <laughs> doing all of the design jobs. That you you spent the whole of the last two weeks trying to figure out how you're going to put that <laughs> <out>. <laughs> Yeah, it was really difficult. <laughs> Just had to. You, know, you kept our dinner people. warm. For I did. <laughs> I, I, I was on a babysitting. Actually, I saw that. Yeah. Yeah. I, yes. Yeah. You had to fight death off as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Someone was trying to steal our dinner. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, day two. What happened? Day two. Well, we worked out how to sail upwind. We worked out how to sail upwind. Um, yeah. Because previously upwind. I like going fast with the windward hull in the air and Luca likes actually saying going towards the line <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah we had a discussion and agreed to experiment with kind of slowing down a bit and both boards in the water trying to point rather than sail quickly um, it worked it did work we were pointing better I felt like we were a bit slower, but I mean, it was just less wind. Um, we had a better VMG. So. Yeah, we had better VMG. So, yeah, it's fun to work on is our upwind boat speed. Yeah. I mean, we've not got any problems with downwind boat speed. Mm -hmm. You know, we were pretty yeah, regularly yeah, leading the fleet at the lowered yeah. mark. We just lost it going upwind. So, um, yeah. <laughs> And then we had the coastal race to yeah. Nab End. What was it Nab Tower? Well, it was start off Wooten Creek, yeah. sail basically down the Solent Channel, out of the eastern Solent, and the last red can there is Nab End. And then we went round that, out to Nab Tower, and then back into the finish line at Benbridge. Mm -hmm. And we um, were shifting. <laughs> Yeah. 
We were second boat on second line boat. on us. Second um, boat rounding Nav Tower. Yeah. And then on the way back in, just the wind kept building and it was, we had yeah. a full rig up, uh, just main and jib, and we were cruising at uh, mm. what, 16, 18, 19 knots, really. Yeah. There's a farrier trimaran called NRB, which is a bit of a machine when you look yeah. at it. It's got sea foils and everything like that, and they were the only boat at the event that was faster than us on handicap. Yeah. Um, and we had them in our sights. They were they were getting bigger and bigger. Uh, and afterwards, they yeah. said like we could see you coming up behind us. Yeah. Uh, and the boat really just had the bit between her teeth. You know, um, if you look at the videos, it looks like she's being pushed, and we were pushing her. But it, you know, everything felt fine. The mm. the helm was very balanced. Um, you know, she felt like she could take more. And normally, when you start pushing her too hard, She'll tell you, you can feel that. Yeah, mm-hmm. she's actually a very communicative yeah. boat. So we felt very confident. I felt very confident mm-hmm. driving. But then there was this like very familiar and very horrible noise of splintering wood. <laughs> and I looked down, and the uh, the, the rudder. wooden rudder, the one remaining wooden rudder that we hadn't fixed over the winter, had um, gone out sideways. And uh, yeah. Uh, exactly that moment we powered up as well so the last thing that rudder did before it disappeared over the back of the boat was head her up into the wind and and bring her back under control rudder back in the water so i had steerage and then we kind of wrestled the main down as quickly as we could and so um, she is a really well behaved boat she is yeah yeah so it's happened to us twice now so yeah. we're, we're so seasonal experts well we're experienced snapping the rudders. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so but, ho- yeah. hopefully they'll both be sorted yep and, yeah, um, yeah. Well, well we're we're hoping to put a new steering system on the boat with okay. better design rudders and maybe some carbony bits if we can make that happen um just because you know it, she's taking a lot of load and yeah. Yeah. all of those old components not necessarily badly built or badly designed in the first place but they're just very old now and sure. they've been taking a lot of load so yeah yeah so we managed to nurse the boat back in with a just put sailing in on jib as the engine decided it didn't want to be an engine anymore again so we got a race officer yeah. to come tow us in basically um, mm-hmm. which was very nice of them um ended up pulling into the yard with our snap rudder and kind of formulated a plan very quickly. Did you put the reef in? No, we wouldn't. Yeah, but we were raining in NRB. They were only doing 14 <laughs> knots. Mist is always going to get you in trouble. But you guys are on a mission, aren't you? So you're hatching a plan. Right, what we're going to do, yeah. our initially plan was going to be drive back to Plymouth and make yeah. come back here, um, back at the Montreal Centre. Because um, we we built one new one over the winter to replace the one we broke last season, so yeah. we had a CAD file for cutting the foam okay. out on the CNC machine we've yeah. got here, and there was you know like kind of in my mind I could have come back and had all my tools and everything yeah. ready to um, go. And but yeah, we got a load of phone numbers from people, didn't we, and went hunting around the island. <laughs> You were nearly there. You oh, were nearly that. But we were reeling in our beer as well. <laughs> so, a very kind boatyard just well, over there has the offered to give you a hand to fix them. Definitely. Excellent. Good luck. See you later. <laughs> it turned out that the boatyard in Benbridge that was just down the road from where we were tied up had everything we needed just walk i remember it was just a walk in knock on the door and being like please yeah. <laughs> is there any chance you have foam and enough carbon fiber well the initial plan was to try and stick a blade back on the bottom of the yeah. broken bit really? when we arrived it looked like a very traditional boatyard and we were quite skeptical about our chances of finding everything what we, we were after yeah. um and then Suddenly, you know, oh yeah, we've got this little bit of foam here and that little bit of foam there, and there's a roll of carbon that we bought off Lamborghini or McLaren or something <laughs> like that. They had like 
just some knocking around. really, really yeah. nice carbon that they'd got from a racing car manufacturer. And um, we kind of thought, actually, we can just build a whole new one and that will be better. Yeah. Um, That's amazing. Yeah. They were. So what was the name of the boatyard? Will Squibb, Squib, William Squibb boatyard. So okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. amazing, really. Yeah, yeah, um, very kind of them. Mm. Um, and, you know, they just left us in one of their sheds overnight with a load of tools and everything. It was very trusting, you know, very kind of mm. them. 24 hours after breaking the rudder, we were back on the water, yeah. um, which is, you know, I think that's quite an achievement for anyone, really. Drew round the non-broken one and cut that out of a piece of foam and then shaped yeah. something that was roughly foil shaped with an angle grinder and then just covered it in lots and lots of carbon. And off you went. And off we went, yeah. And then? We went out the next afternoon and um, went. For, we missed the last race of the event, yeah. which was a bit of a shame, uh, but we thought we'd go for a little sail anyway and we sort of came out of attack and um, Tom's like oh Pete the tiller's just come off in my hand <laughs> <laughs> so yeah snap the tiller so we broke the tiller yeah. uh, which was another wow well, we repaired it the next morning didn't we yeah but again it was like we went back to Will Squibb <laughs> And we were supposed to be going back in the morning to give them the billing address and everything to, to send them bill for the materials to them. We went back in and gave it to them and then went, oh, I don't suppose you can help us with this as well. <laughs> but again, they were very, very handy and yeah. really accommodating and really mm -hmm. nice. And um, nice. we managed to get some stainless off them, drilled some holes through the till a bit and uh, yeah. bolted it all back together. And, um, yeah, basically a cut and shut with a load yeah, of bolts exactly. through it. So it's job. been uh, quite an educational process yeah. as yeah. well. And an uh, emotional um, and physical roller coaster as well. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. Because yeah. then the, the, the next thing was the Round the Island round the race, island. wasn't it? Yeah. And, and that brought up some quite big questions for you. Oh, yeah, definitely. Well, initially we were saying uh, by the end of the Thursday, in, uh, we were saying, we're, what was it, Friday morning? It was, it was Friday. That everyone was starting to move their boats to cows and wooden to get ready for around the island, and we were, and we were stuck in Benbridge together. putting the tiller back together, yeah. and then missed our tide gate to get out basically, and it was very windy, and we basically couldn't get off the dock with our engine, so we were kind of stuck in Benbridge, being like, "Oh God, we're not going to be able to race." But also, it was very much yeah. in our minds that we've just broken the rudder and just snapped the tiller. Yeah. What else could go wrong basically? Mm. Yeah. And the, the forecast around the island was looking pretty pretty full on. Yeah. Um, yeah. So at that point, we had to make a decision on do we actually want to try and go for it or do we want to... And we, we knocked it on the oh. head. Yeah, um, initially we yeah, said we're not going to do it. Because we were um. looking at the swell and the wind and everything. You know, the boats fairly bow down when she accelerates. Yeah. And with big waves, that gets quite sketchy. Um, and on... Um, you know, as much of an unknown as a new rudder and when you start messing around with the geometry of the steering system with the mm. tillers and everything, yeah. it's quite easy to get something wrong. Um, and, you know, we just... Basically, we, we, we'd emotionally ground to a hole and just were ready to give up, and we did. Mm. And then we went and saw Hissy Fit at the Folly in uh, for a beer. Yeah. And they talked us into going and doing it. Well, I would not say that you were talked into it. You did the right thing. Yeah. You came and you had a team meeting yeah. where you were able to air all your concerns yeah. and worries. We and said we're worried about flipping the boat over. We got shown a video of a dragonfly falling over and went, you could do that, which was fun. <laughs> <laughs> but I think the, the, um, the bit that made us do it was uh, Simon came to us and said he would have done it at our age. So, uh, yeah, he was like, we, well, yeah. I asked him, didn't I? I said, when you were our age, would you have gone? And he was like, yeah, instantly yeah. didn't yeah. think about it. He was just like, yeah, I would have gone. So he sort of hatched a plan to get up ludicrously early. and Up at four in the morning. Brilliant. Um, yeah. To get out of Benbridge, and we had a two hour sail basically in the morning just to get to the start line. Well, that was good, wasn't it? Because it yeah, exposed it gave us a, a few down. teething problems. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the plan good. was always to sail to Hurst and see how we felt, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
And yeah, but you know, sailing up the Solent, the new rudder was, you know, there was something like a feel wasn't quite right about it. It would because it wasn't a proper perfect fair shape, basically. Yeah. It was catching and biting on different okay. points. So but because it, it was yeah. a bodge job, um, mm. it wasn't a bodge job. It was a quick. It, was right, a it wasn't a bodge <laughs> job. But it was. It was quick. It was done. a quick <laughs> job. Yeah. yeah it was built in twenty four hours. Yeah. yeah rushed. So we did a um, couple of power reaches as well before the start. Yeah, we? just to, just to warm yeah. everything through. We had like at one point Luke was driving the boat with the hull in the air at about like 17 knots whilst yeah. I was hanging over, over the, the back, back of the leeward <laughs> hull waves trying to wash me over the back of the boat just, just so I could have a look at what was going on was going, so. um, but yeah it, it was very random and difficult to predict and it would try and aggressively turn the boat to port every okay. time it happened so um, you know then you think well you know I can just fight that but then mm. you're putting a lot of load through mm. the tillers which are structurally Not under right. question yeah. so yeah, we we said we'd start and sail down to Hurst and see how we felt. Yeah. Um, but pre-start, we saw a lot of um, excited people. Uh, Nigel on Triassic was very excited and sort of like yeah. whooping when he saw us and Brendan, Brendan as well. Mm-hmm. Um, everyone <laughs> who we saw, who we knew was like, go on boys, that's really good, well done. Yeah. We got to Hurst and I was like, I really want to turn around. This doesn't feel right, but I can't bring myself to sail back past them. Everyone, so we're going to yeah. have to keep going. Excellent. Yeah. Good. And are you glad that you did it? Oh, yeah, 100%. Yeah. It was, it was, it was a very full on day. It was it terrifying. Was, yeah. You know, constantly, basically from the needles to the finish line felt like we were nursing the boat home. Yeah. Um, and you know we weren't at all in full push mode. Yeah. No. Um, we were very much. It was very much. Let's look after the boat and actually make it yeah, around. So yeah. We just want. We just yeah. want to finish basically. Yeah. But um, even saying that, we still had points where we were pushing pretty hard. Yeah. Um, we so we got. Flip it over. Yeah. We we were so we tacked up to her up to Hurst. Everything was feeling all right, really, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. We were where we were usually sat in the fleet of of trying rounds and cats. Um, sat in a pretty comfortable position. Got to Hurst, managed to see, luckily managed to see the big squall coming in behind us mm-hmm. um, that Origami didn't see. Mm. Um, which is, so we were right next to Origami, which okay. was a, is it an F26? F27. Seven, so an F27 yeah. that capsized wow. next to us. So you, I uh, didn't realise yeah. you were yeah. right we were next to the were about 200 metres away Crikey. from the yeah. okay. Yeah. So we saw that, we saw five monoholes in front of us broach instantly, yeah. kites going everywhere. And we were like, people, right, people in the water, yeah. um, mm. damn boys in the water. Yeah. yeah. It was chaos. Mm. <laughs> it was pure yeah. chaos. I mean, we, mm. yeah, we were quite lucky that we sort of saw this huge black cloud blowing yeah. out from pool mm. and we went we're not going to put the kite up no. straight away we're just going to let that get to us and see what it does yeah uh and you know i mean we still took off just two sailing when yeah. it hit us so. so we had a reef in um with just reef and jib uh, reef the main and jib and we decided we we're just going to stick on this line and head offshore a bit and just wait and just see what happens yeah so worst case worse you could just come back and go we could go back down yeah. back down um Back down the silent, but yeah. that never came. We we got out um, for a jibe in. The school went through. Um, put the kite up. Put the kite up. Started surfing down some down some of the bigger waves. Yeah. Um, then we thought we saw another school, so we took the kite down. Yeah. But we were very very conservative with it. Yeah. <laughs> then the school Not didn't good. come. Yeah. So we put the kite back up. Yeah. Um, and then we had a couple of points where we were going went before. through the race at St. Cats. And accidentally hit we... the worst point you could hit off St. Cats with just standing we waves in front of us mm. as we uh, as we came over the top of them. Um, all the monos had done everything. Everyone around us was doing it right and going inshore, but we couldn't really bear away any further. Um, and if we were hotting up anymore, we would have been overpowered mm-hmm. and, and would have gone over. So we uh, we took the decision just to go for it and just just hold on basically which in hindsight probably wasn't it was the best fine decision. until it wasn't it fine. was fine until it wasn't yeah so we, uh we got lift we saw there was a big set of waves coming in behind us basically um got lifted quite heavily by one wave and thrown down into into the back of one basically mm. which just completely Buried. parked us up on end yeah um I started climbing over the back of the boat. Pete started climbing oh, really? over the back that, of the boat. That yeah. buried. Yeah, Tom okay. had slid all the way down to the front beam. Wow. I was holding okay. onto the spinnaker sheet at the time. I think mean, okay. she was um, she was either at or possibly even possibly slightly past ninety. 90 she was she, up and she over. She was she yeah. was gone 
forwards. Wow. She would, there was no way she would have come back up the way she went over. Yeah. But then the starboard bow, for some reason, somehow bo- bobbed in. out of the no, water. Yeah. And the port bow dug in and she flipped and landed on her side. And as she did that, she kind of twisted over on a wave, so yeah. that she came back upright Good when boat. she did. Yeah. Very <laughs> like, there was absolutely yeah. no skill or judgment on any no, of yeah. our All of we, we'd released everything. Yeah. Just on, it was a complete ride. Um, wow. um, but I've never taken a boat. I've never pitched pole a cat that far with it coming back up. I've always, they've always that capsized. That's yeah. nice. So it was, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. She, she, all, she wanted to... She wanted to come back up. Yeah, 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 yeah. But so, at yeah. that point, we were thinking, yeah. right, we're, we're the next casualties in the water. We're gone here. Um, we were pretty shaken after it, weren't we? We took the car. Well, there was a lot of adrenaline down. afterwards, and all of us yeah. were pretty. Yeah. Ecstatic. We all, I think the first thing we did was laugh. All of us we were laughing and screaming. What else yeah. To do. <laughs> we, yeah. You, you get to that uh, point. I can you're understand like, well, that. Yeah. yeah. And then the yeah. shakes kicked in. Yeah. I certainly. Yeah, you know, as the driver got very shaky yeah. for a little while after. So we took it. We took it a bit chill. Went into into bay the bay off Ventnor, yeah. off Ventnor and just came in, t- taking it yeah. slow, basically. And then J eighty O. J eighty O. We're not having that. Yeah. <laughs> so we put the kite back <laughs> on. <laughs> and that's where we came across the gunboat Coco de Mer that had um, obviously flipped, um, and yeah, sailed past them. And at that point, got hit by another squall. Which powered us up. Took the kite back down again. <laughs> and almost almost flipped us again, but yeah, we took the kite back down. She's never actually previously lifted her sterns in a yeah. berry. She just goes whole boat underwater, just stops, right, okay. and then you let go of everything. And it you know, pops back and up. And then she just depowers a little bit, pops back up and keeps mm-hmm. going. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Well, it's yeah. really good to learn how the boat handles yeah. in those yeah, absolutely. variations yeah, exactly. of And it was Luke and I's first ever around the island. Yeah. So okay. you know we now what know about to do it exactly yeah we yeah. now know we need to go inshore at St Cats <laughs> yeah um, and what everywhere. what a race to be your first one as oh, well yeah, yeah. And yeah. pretty <laughs> full on pretty they flipped, yeah. yeah they flipped another, if they flipped two other boats and the amount of maydays and pan pans that we yeah it was non stop it was absolutely fleet, um, eighteen man oh. overboards I heard somewhere um, yeah yeah you did you did brilliantly you did really really well yeah. Um, and yeah, I mean, the beat up the Solent was quite stressful as well. Safer, yeah, you know, it was kind of like once we were around the bottom at, at Benbridge, it was nice. And, mm. you know, again, I just, you know, it was quite a nice feeling of just like everything's going to be okay now. Mm-hmm. And we had a ripping good sail from Benbridge up towards um, yeah. Ride. Good little fight with yeah. Cape 31s. Screaming just, past yeah. Cape 31s. Mm. But then we got into ride, wind over tide, chop in the Solon, and that was just like brutal. Underwater mm. yeah. most of the time. And we yeah. had to short tack up the south shore. She doesn't accelerate enough out of attack to make short tacking mm-hmm. really pay. Mm. But, you know, we didn't really have a choice, I think. So, no, um, but we, we, we climbed some more places there. We, yeah, we, yeah. we were definitely hunting down some other boats. Yeah, um, mm. and once we once we cleared ride sand and we were up into um, Osborne Bay, we made up some real real places yeah. didn't we in the flat water she's there. a rocket ship so yeah um yeah yeah um and great then, yeah, yeah got into the finish all safe and sound yeah engine stopped working again but we were used to that so well, uh, i saw that yeah so we had to uh <laughs> sail in onto the pontoon at cows again um yeah. and yeah that was that was uh, the conclusion of it and we did it in seven hours seven hours 45 i believe in the end mm-hmm. being conservative yeah. Yeah, seven hours of full on. I was pretty knackered by the end of it, seven hours more or less on the helm. Yeah. Trying to coax the boat, pretty stressful, and before that, not very yeah. much sleep yeah. fixing yeah. the boat, putting it all yeah. back together. So and getting went, up, getting up there as well. Yeah, yeah. That everyone was, was very excited for a big night out in cows, and I'd had two drinks and started falling asleep yeah. on the table <laughs> in the pub. So yeah. yeah, but what a, what an experience! How old are you, Pete? Twenty two. Twenty two, and yeah. Luca. Twenty three. Twenty three. So yeah, yeah, great experience to yeah. to have, and yeah. um, sure. yeah. Yeah. Is there anything else that you would like to add? Uh, please, someone buy us a new spinnaker. And, um, 
hopefully we'll be back next year with new rudders and yeah, daggerboard cassettes and it's see if we progress. can break Darren's record. So we've got, yeah, four hours, four hours, 45 minutes to beat. So that's okay. what we're going for. Yep. Yeah. Um, four and a half. Four and a half is what we want, which is yeah. what Orion did it in. Which yeah. Is one of the Firebirds of a yeah. similar size. So uh, yeah, yeah. we've just... got to beat a Firebird. So.